Welcome aboard the new patient group flight deck. Less chaos. Check. Less stress. Check. Less advertising costs. Check. More personal and financial freedom. Ah. Check. All right. Business checklist completed. Let the takeoff roll begin. Welcome to Season 7 of the New Patient Group Audio Experience, a podcast dedicated to forward-thinking doctors wanting to learn innovative ways to run their business today so your practice can achieve new heights tomorrow. And now your host, he's the founder and CEO of New Patient Group, managing partner of WriteChat, and a trusted motivational speaker for Invisalign, OrthoFi, and others. Brian Wright. Hey, New Patient Group and Right Chat Nation. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Brian Wright here. Welcome into another edition of the New Patient Group podcast. If you're watching over on our YouTube station, hey there. Uh, please do me a favor. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you're watching. Um, make some comments, create some dialogue, share with your friends and colleagues. Always highly appreciated. We are off to the AAO this week, and this is your last chance, everybody, to register you and your team for that Friday masterclass. Oliver and my, from OrthoFi and myself are putting on about a four-hour, five-hour workshop. So remember, last chance to get registered for that. And today we're going to start entering into a new series. Uh, the first part of the series is going to be about a four-part series. Today we're going to be diving into... Just what is customer service? Laying the foundation that you should all know by heart and that you should all pound into your employees' heads just around the actual term. I believe when I talk to you today about customer service, it is the number one most misunderstood terminology in business. And this is going to roll into a series that is going to be the three ways you know that your business has reached the pinnacle of customer service. Part one of that series, though, today is laying the foundation, making sure that we are on the same page when we talk people business and we are known as the experienced company. We are going to teach you something today that is going to blow you away, meaning that very rarely when I read this definition, because there is a true definition of customer service, and it is very, very different than what many of you out there probably think it is. And we live by this definition. It is everything that we teach, everything we have under one roof with New Patient Group, every single thing goes back to the definition that I'm going to be talking about today and educating all of you on today. Then, after we are done with this series on how you have known or how you know that your business has reached the pinnacle of customer service, I'm going to then be rolling into a series that talks about, okay, now what are the three essentials to get there, right? The three ways you know that you've reached there, but how do you get to those three? Because after I talk about and we go through this initial series, many of you out there are going to go, damn, I mean, that sounds great. I mean, that's a dream. How in the hell do I ever achieve, one, the definition that we're going to be talking about today, but then that three-part series, part one, two, and three, on how you know you've got to that definition and you've reached the pinnacle, you've reached the top. Now, you're going to be saying, man, that is so cool, but come on, Brian, really? Can that actually happen? And the answer is, yes, it can. Is it easy? No. There's some pain points. You've got to get through it. It's not easy. But once you're there, baby, whoo, it becomes a dream. But it is a hard journey to get there. So then we're going to be talking about, and I'm going to teach you how to get there in the series that follows that. One of, the, one of my most favorite things now with this new podcast format is we can do more things like this because I can put them out quicker. They can be shorter. We can do ongoing series. And just a reminder, if you were listening today, I've noticed the downloads. Since we went to this new podcast format, there is still a episode that comes out at the beginning of each month, usually right around the first business day. I try to get it out the first business day of every single month. And in the past, that's been the only podcast that's come out. Now we're doing it differently. Where I'm going to have more guests. Uh, we're going to have every three months, I'm doing a, a national webinar that's going to be repurposed into a, a longer podcast episode. Those will still be hour, hour and a half. The rest of these, I'm going to try to keep much shorter, okay, more concise. But remember, I have noticed the downloads keep growing when we've launched it on the first business day of every month. But the other ones that are now dripping throughout the month aren't getting the same, same downloads because I don't think everybody knows they're actually there. So remember to go back and, and be checking your podcast app and our YouTube station, whichever format that you, that you either listen to via the audio experience or you watch it on YouTube, whatever it is. 
just make sure and remember there's more frequent podcasts coming. Like this one kicking off May, for an example, there's going to be several more that are released in May. It may be on Fridays. It may be on Mondays. I don't know yet. We're going to kind of just see how it goes. But several are going to be released every month. Just make sure to remember. I want you to imagine walking into a Walt Disney. And, you know, Walt Disney's obviously, <laughs> unfortunately, they've gone a little political and they're more worried about, about some crazy things now than they used to. But they're still known as, you know, Walt Disney and a brand experience. One of my favorite ones to talk about is the montage which actually puts the Ritz-Carlton to shame. I don't talk about the montage much, and there's others like it because they're just not well-known enough. So if you stand in front of an audience, you try to give names that everyone's going to know whether they've been there or not. Ritz-Carlton, Walt Disney. So we'll use the Walt Disney as an example today. And if you've been there, I want you to remember uh, how you felt and, and the things that you told other people whenever you left and just the interactions you had with employees there and and just how all of that went. And there's a very big misconception. Like I said, customer service is the biggest, I believe, just miscued and misunderstood terminology there is in business. You hear a lot of people talk hospitality as if it's customer service. And they kind of intertwine those 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 uh, those words. And hospitality is simple is simply an ingredient. I, I want you to view customer service as I lead up to this definition here momentarily. I want you to view customer service as the recipe that you are trying to cook. Okay. It is the overall goal that you're trying to achieve. It is a and for all of you out there, it should be part of your mission. It should be part of your vision statement. Uh, to achieve the definition that I'm going to be describing today. Because like I said, it is a thing of beauty if you can ever get there. Hard journey, but amazing if you get there. So back to Walt Disney for a second. Walt Disney choreographs a lot of stuff behind the scenes. And what I mean by that is, is there is not one thing that Walt Disney has that is set up for you or I and your family and my family to win. Every single thing they do has a choreographed purpose, a choreographed vision behind the scenes to make sure that you get more than you expected whenever you interact, whether you're on their digital marketing, whether you pick up the phone and call them, whether you uh, pull in the parking lot when you walk through the front door, et cetera, et cetera. And, and there's two parts to that, right? They've got to exceed your expectations and give you more than you would have expected as far as the Disney theme stuff goes, meaning the Harry Potter adventure, the Star Wars adventure, uh, the, the roller coasters, the rides, all of that. But they also have to give you beyond what you expect from a, a non-ride standpoint, right? How they interact with you, how they greet you. How they, how they take you to your hotel room, how the hotel room looks, how the food tastes, all the other non-theme part interactions that really end up making 90% of the overall experience that you're going to have, maybe 80%, but the majority, the vast majority, they map out and choreograph all of those. And they do so because their goal is to set up a journey with you and your family so they win, right? A big, big, big misconception around customer service is that the customer, the patient, the client has to win. And it's an inaccurate description of what customer service actually is. Walt Disney and the Ritz, take the Ritz. The Ritz requires 250 hours of role play training studying, things like that, before an employee is allowed to interact with a customer in person or over the phone. And I want you to think about the insane commitment to excellence that is. And the beauty of what I'm about to, to talk to you about, the, the definition of what customer service actually is, is the beauty is, is that whatever your problems are, patient compliance, you know, maybe you have high new patient no-shows, your conversion suffering, 
your patient referrals aren't where they where or where you want them to be. Your social media channels aren't winning. Uh, your YouTube station doesn't have a lot of views and interaction on it. You know, your existing patients, they're not brushing. They're not scanning with remote monitoring. They're not wearing their clear aligners, right? They're popping off brackets, whatever it is. The beauty is all of that can be fixed if you fully grasp what becoming a customer service organization is all about. And like I said, the next three podcasts that I'm going to do are going to showcase, okay, this is how you know you've got there. And it's also going to showcase for many of you out there that you, you can realize that you're not even close. And it's not an insult. The reality is, is the vast majority of companies never achieve the definition that I'm now going to tell you. Customer service is when you as a business get what you want from your prospective and respective customers. So your new and your existing, right? That's how the definition starts. And I want to talk about that here for just a second before we finish the definition. Because when I finish it, you realize, wow, what a dream if we could accomplish that. But wow, how hard is that to accomplish that? So let's think about the first part of this definition. And again, this definition goes back to everything we do being the experienced company that we are with New Patient Group. Is back to the definition, you winning. And that I want to get across first and foremost to all of you out there that if you don't win, you are not a customer service organization. Going back to the Ritz, going back to Walt Disney, every single thing that you and your family experience with those two companies, they have designed it for them to win. They have designed it for them to get what they want from you. Now think Disney, what do they want? They want you to show up. They want you to spend as much possible money as you possibly can. They want you to leave remembering it in the most positive fashion possible. They want you to spread the word and become the sales force for them, okay? And they also want you to come back, right? Those were five things. And speaking of those five things, this is, I don't even know how many seasons ago, but it's one of our most downloaded podcasts. And I did the five Walt Disney experiences and how to get them to use or how to install them into your practice to win. I can't remember what. You can search Walt Disney experiences in our podcast. That'll come up because I have no idea when that was. So now we've got the first part down. You have to win. Meaning, if you want patient compliance to be better, right? Because the better it is, the more you win. If you told them it's an 18-month treatment and they get done in 15 months, 16 months, 17 months, 18 at the latest, you win. Right? So how do you do that? You have to choreograph how that happens from job descriptions, to training of the people on how they speak, to so much, so much more. Right? If you want your new patients to schedule on the new patient call and then show up to your door, there is a very specific choreographed process behind the scenes that you must commit to. It's that simple. If you do, they will show up at a high level and you will fix your new patient no-show problems, which all of you have, by the way. You all have one or two a month. And if you do... That's actually great, but that's still a sixty dollars to $100,000 loss a year, depending on what you charge. It's still a major leaky hole that needs to be plugged. Most of you out there have four, five, six, seven, eight new patient no-shows a month. It's a major, major problem. So now the first part of the definition is read. So now I'm going to read the whole thing, all right? Customer service is when your business, your practice gets what it wants from its prospective customers, meaning the people that haven't bought from you yet. So the people shopping around online, uh, picking up the phone and calling you, coming through your door, that one, and also the people that have signed the contract. Now, how do you get what you want from them? But meanwhile, those same customers that I'm talking about believe they receive more than expected from you. So now let me read this together. Customer service is when your business gets what it wants from its prospective and, pres and respective customers. Meanwhile, they believe they got more than expected via every interaction they had with you. Okay, now, now that we've put this definition together, 
not only do you have to win, but they have to believe they got more than they expected via every interaction they have with your business. Now, I've got podcasts with this new format coming up of just real life things. Like something happened to my wife the other day here in Colorado Springs. I've already shot that podcast. It'll be put out later down the road. And it'll just show you how many leaky holes are all over your business that you don't know are happening, right? Your practice management software, OrthoFi, Gage, all this data, that's great. It's valuable. You need to see the data. The problem is, is none of that data shows a small business owner what's really happening, right? When Janice doesn't ask for referrals properly and therefore you don't get them, when, when somebody walks through the door and they sit in your waiting room for 10 minutes, when your TC says five trigger words that cost you a sale, when doctor, when you're in the exam room and you blow it because of your lack of sales fundamentals and, and people skills and verbiage and presentation skills, when somebody doesn't answer a new patient call and they call the person down the street and buy from them, the list goes on and on and on and on and on as a small business owner that you can't put your finger on the data So therefore, you don't know to fix it. And a lot of times, you don't see value in fixing it. What are you worried about? Well, you're worried about the the $10,000 Invisalign bill, but you're not worried about the $500,000 loss from not following up with people that walked through your door and left. How do you refine that process? You get 10, 20% of those people more back through the door. Right? Because that money was never in your account, you lose value and perspective on what you really need. Back to the customer service thing. One of the things I'm about to go leave to talk about at AO at this workshop is exactly this definition. And, and, ine- and inevitably, the three pillars of, of things that you must have in place in order to accomplish you getting what you want. You know, if you have somebody that is not brushing, how do you set up a choreographed process to have the conversation with them or their mom or dad to get them to start brushing? That is a skill set that your assistants must be armed with. It is a big part of what we teach, the existing patient experience just as well as the new patient, right? All of these things, but you have to view it. The toughest part, I believe, of, of customer service and why there's so many is, yes, it can be hard work right? There's some pain to make it happen. But even more than that, it's the fact that you have to look in the mirror. If you have a no-show problem, a compliance problem, a Invisalign bill that you can't afford is an example. All of these things are on you to get better at so you get what you want while delivering more than that person expected. And not once, but via every interaction. And that all goes into an immersive experience, taking people out of their realm, making them feel like they are part of a hospitality center, not an orthodontic practice. It is revamping the job descriptions, reimagining the whole consumer journey from the time they shop to the time they call to the time they show up to all the other things, digital workflow, exam process. Then they sign the contract. Now what? It's reimagining it all. And for those of you out there that that look forward to change and have an innovative mind, these things that I'm talking about are unbelievable what they can do for your practice. Unbelievable what they can do for your practice. One of the reasons we do digital marketing as well as the consulting, you know, the coaching and, and the culture building and the team training is because digital marketing is an integral piece of setting it up in a way to enhance the existing patient experience, enhancing the new patient experience. Digital marketing does more for those two things than it'll ever do to attract more customers out there calling your business. Now, the beauty is you you still need that. But you've got to have all these pieces under one roof. Today, we're going to wrap it up. But today, all of this, because I'm going to be talking about it throughout the series. Again, the next three podcasts that will follow will talk about the three ways you know that you have reached the pinnacle of customer service, which is the definition of you getting what you want while delivering more than expected via every interaction you have. The next three, next three podcasts that follow will talk about how you'll know if you've reached that pinnacle. After that, we're going to start a series that will talk about the three ways 
that you actually accomplish the three things that I'm going to be talking about following this podcast. Okay, hope everybody enjoyed it. Remember, I want you to embed the definition of customer service into your head. And the way, you know, everything we teach around experience, being a people business first, job descriptions, roles, interactions, all this stuff, is to help you, help you, our customers, our family members, get what you want, whatever it is. And that's the beauty for all of you out there is you get to define what it is that you want. And you have to define that. And then together, we've got to create a choreographed process behind the scenes to ensure no different than sports, right? What do sport teams do? Well, they don't just show up to the game with 50,000 people and go play. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of you do out there, right? It's, it's the nine to five every day. You show up, you show up, you show up, you show up. And you wonder why things are chaotic, not efficient. You're stressed. You're pissed off before you even get to the office. You may be growing like crazy and it's stressful, or you may not be growing at all and it's stressful. Well, what do you do? You have no time to create and implement a playbook, right? The sport teams have blocked time, practice time. And they role play, practice the playbook. Therefore, all the choreographing looks normal whenever the audience is there. They thrive whenever the audience is there. And that's exactly what we do with our customers, what we want to do with you out there, is help you block time, work with you on this choreograph process, role play like crazy to the point whenever you have an audience and your patients are coming through the door, you're able to get what you want while delivering more than expected. And it's a beautiful thing. I look forward to diving into this series. Hope everybody enjoyed today. Now we've got the foundation of customer service down. We're all on the same page. Look forward to having more podcasts this month that dive into this series. We'll talk to everybody soon and see you at AAO. Bye-bye.